Hello, today I'll be demonstrating how to do an auto inertia detection and auto tune on the Compact 3 using the C3 Servo Manager software. I'm going to ahead click online that I'm connected. Now, as part of the drive configuration, the external moment of inertia, the default value is 0 for the minimum and 18,000 kilogram millimeters squared for the maximum. This is a very wide range. The stiffness and dampening are scaled proportional to these minimum and the maximums. Now, if you don't know what they are, um, you can go ahead and, and click the little checkbox here, and this will default as this wide range. Now, you can also use the motion sizer software and calculate based on your loading what the reflected inertia back to the motor is. So you could use the motion sizer software to calculate this, if it's a Parker actuator, the inertial values for the actuators are also in the actuator and positioner catalog, so you could calculate it from there. The Parker actuators, positioners, and gear heads are also in the motion sizer software. We'll use the software today to auto detect that. Left hand side under optimization screen, you can either double click on optimization normal mode here on the left, or you can click to open the optimization tool single click here on the right. Now, in the optimization screen, this is a four quadrant screen with a software oscilloscope in the top left hand corner. The tuning parameters and the second tab on the bottom left hand corner. This shows the advanced. You can uh, see the basic tuning parameters if you click on the standard under the yellow triangle there on its side. On the top right hand corner has the status display showing we're online and cyclically updating. If that isn't updating you can go ahead and click circular arrows there. If you want to see the status positions, uh, go into the status values. This shows the most common status values for your drive technology level. My unit here is I30T11, which is an EPL Compax 3. I'm going to take the actual position, which is 680.5, and drag that up to the top left-hand corner. I um, want to take a look at the speed as well too. The actual speed is 681.9. You'll notice that these are in user units based on the drive configuration. In this setup tab on the second tab on the bottom right hand corner, if you click to activate the setup mode, this will grab control of the Compax 3 through the software. So this isn't looking at the inputs and the outputs on the X11 or the X12 or the optional X22 connector. It's not looking at the Codasys program. If you're using a T30 or T40, we are strictly running this control here locally, not looking at any of the field bus options either. So if we want to energize the drive, there's a latch here on the right hand side. There's also a brake latch to release the brake with the motor de-energized. Uh, when you first enable the drive, it will automatically deactivate the brake, so you don't need to click that. Now, if we uh, enter the setup and test move parameters, go to general setup parameters, you can see the jog velocity and the accelerations. These were values that were part of the jog setup in the uh, drive configuration. If you want to go ahead and change those, uh, you can here. When you accept the input, you, you can jog up and down. My unit is a uh, Stealth RS90 10 to 1 right angle gearhead with an SMN motor with an absolute encoder and HPLA unit and a vertical orientation. So to do the auto inertia detection on the right hand side you'll see it this ghosted motor icon there. If you click on that, if you hover your mouse it'll say please make settings first and then start. So this just says that you need to set up your parameters. Now for a rotary system, you can, if it's a rotary gear motor or a motor application, you can run it continuously, which would just run it in one direction. My unit is a linear actuator, so that would not be good. I would use an oscillating system, and with the travel range, I can set the travel range here which is a plus and minus so from wherever it is I'm going to go ahead and set this to 750 millimeters 
and then the maximum velocity I'm going to set to 1300. This is based on what the mechanics actually can handle, so you would need to take a look at the actuator specs and the gearhead specs and make sure that these are within range. The, the amplitude of the excitation signal is the percentage of the motor current that it will inject into the motor and shake the rotor, try to detect what the load is that's connected to the motor shaft. The default value is 20%. That's a good value in my experience. The permissible tracking error, my unit is set to 65 millimeters per revolution, so I'm going to set that to plus or minus uh, 650. The default value is 10, and that presumes that the motor is 1 millimeter per rev, so uh, if you're using in degrees, 10 would be a, a fraction of a revolution, so you would want to increase that to 3600 to be roughly 10 revolutions of the motor. Uh, we recommend doing the number of measurements at least twice, if not three times, to ensure that the algorithm is consistent in the inertial value that it's calculating. I'm just going to do this once as a demonstration. For most belt drive actuators, uh, 7500 would be a good maximum acceleration value. For most screw drives, those are 1 to 2 G maximums. So the default value is 10 millimeters per second squared, which is roughly 1 G. I'm going to go ahead and, and leave that. Go ahead and click Accept Input. Now back on the main screen, now you'll see that the load identification icon has changed colors, now has a blue background and a red question mark, so if you go ahead and click there in the load identification window, go ahead and click start. This will start moving the motor. You can see by the graph what the current is doing and also what the velocity is doing. On the bottom, if you click Process Results, Process Results, you can see what it's calculated for the minimum and the maximum inertial values. If you go ahead and click that, that will then change the drive configuration, the inertial values that are in there, so it'll scale the stiffness and the damping gains based on the inertial value instead of the unknown value of the zero as being the maximum and uh, the very large number for the maximum. And now your rotary servo motor has been tuned. This concludes the module on how to do the auto inertia detection, the auto tuning with the Compax 3 C3 servo manager software. Hope this module has been helpful. Thanks and have a great day.